Habitat is, has will always be a playground for this nurturing of, mm. of connections, which is, which is a dream. Hola, bienvenidos a Habitat. Again, guys, I'm Lauren. I'm hosting my retreat here. And over the last year, I've been working for Habitat. Working for this community and this group has deepened my experience in life, brought me endless inspiration, and just made me a happier, happier better me. We're super, super lucky to be sitting here today for a couple minutes with the, the founder and the creative director. So, co-founder. 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 Oh my God, Kutcher would kill me. He would me. kill me. He would, he would, you know, he would, he would he'd Kutcher. divorce me. And divorce me too, like as part of the tribe. So yes, co-founder, creative director. Can you tell me a little bit about you and how Habitat came to be, how you and Kafir came to be together creating? I was, I was uh, producing events in LA, uh, super curated, very, very specific towards a to type of music. Um, but more importantly, curating the people and bringing in people that were really committed to a musical experience mm. because, of, because of my background. And um, I kept hearing, in, all, in a lot of my friends in similar, similar circles, because these concentric circles with Kafir kept telling me, you have to meet Kafir, you have to meet Kafir, you have to meet Kafir. Uh, I found out later when I met Kafir that the same thing was happening on his mm -hmm. side. People saying, you need to meet Eduardo. Kafir was working on, uh, at the time on this, on like, creating like beautiful um, uh, installations and beautiful tents mm -hmm. and you know it was very tribal in his in his decor and um, and I, you know I'm a big fan of, of what he, of what he was doing without knowing that he was doing it um, and uh, and we came we finally met up I knew his wife actually before I even met him mm -hmm. for years he she'd be coming to my event mm -hmm. and uh, we finally met up and it was really really kind of really love at first sight we, we we immediately clicked we immediately realized how how our values were completely you know the same um and within probably 20 minutes we were business partners best friends mm. and and set a date for our first habitat eduardo you mentioned your background but you didn't speak to it do you mind telling us a little bit about you yeah, I, so I, my background professionally was in music. I went to school for music. I studied opera and composition. I also studied philosophy and religion at the same time. Moving out of that, I built an accidental career. As I was going through school, I, I was paying my way through school in hospitality, mm -hmm. bartending and serving. And actually, my first job in a restaurant ever was, I didn't have any experience in the restaurant. and I broke into this Italian restaurant and I basically said, I'll sing happy birthdays to every table in the room, in, 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 in the restaurant. Uh, That's for, great. You know, for tips. Um, and, uh, and eventually that turned into me waiting tables and then managing the restaurant. And so I, I had a really nice, accidental and beautiful career in hospitality um, that brought me in and out of music constantly. For me, music is one of the most important cornerstones and foundations of Habitas and the way that music moves you and it's always such a, a joy and and privilege to hear you play <laughs> and as well to meet the people that you bring here to play music. It's incredible I mean having a space where I get to play uh, and Sort of even you know where where a speaker is placed, where the audience mm -hmm. is, how a candle is lit, like how that complements the music. I mean, it, like music is incredible and absolutely, uh, in my opinion, of course I'm biased, the most important part of Avita. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's and there's other things of why that is. No, I mean people connect on a dance floor mm -hmm. or you know at a concert without any preconceptions of how they should connect, mm -hmm. just connecting through music. Mm -hmm. And then music kind of triggers all these involuntary muscles in the body where mm. I've seen you get on the <laughs> down the dance floor. <laughs> Got and my so dancing you, crown yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. So you lose yourself. And when you lose yourself, you're losing yourself with other people that, ha that, uh, that have accepted that vulnerability. Mm -hmm. 
and then that, there's, there's a really, really powerful and, and profound connection that happens. But when you, can, when you can invite and share an experience with somebody, and obviously it's a business, so, so to sell the experience based on the actual experience mm. and the aspirational aspect of what will happen in that space, then you can bring in whatever music you think is necessary mm -hmm. to, up, to uplift and create that soundtrack. And then it, becomes a, then it becomes more about discovery than about something you already know. And at Habitas, we live through discovery mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, in creating that sense, of, <clears throat> that, that childhood sense of like, of like, wow. Habitas is described as a physical platform for a cultural movement. What does that mean? So many things, mm -hmm. and, you know, and when it comes down to defining habitat, we sort of have our, find ourselves for, forcing ourselves to actually use these words. Mm -hmm. um, but it's all, it's all, it's, it's everything we've talked about. It's, it's, it's a place um, for people to, to completely open themselves up to whatever comes their way, but that ability to be able to open yourself up is based on trust mm -hmm. and so you know genuine intention mm -hmm. and authenticity and what we try to do um, creates that trust and you know and, and, and it's, it's really kind of black and white mm -hmm. like you know when it's real and you know when it's not. Now, the hashtag for our Abitas is, is, of course, live inspired. And sometimes when you're leaving the hotel, it says leave inspired. Right. And after working for the company in the community for a year and participating in the events of the last year, I know that, that every event has literally changed me and changed everybody else who's, who's been a part of it. And us. Yeah. We sometimes sit back and like when we have a second and we watch, we watch people mm. like, you know, <laughs> people just play and, and like let things unfold in the space and we wonder what it would be like to be a guest at Habitat. Mm. But at the same time, you know, even though we don't, we don't enjoy it in the same way as a guest because the guest is just bombarded with Habitat, the mm -hmm. reaction of our guests, um, when, when they are bombarded mm -hmm. with Habitat, mm -hmm. that reaction is worth is, is, is priceless. Mm -hmm. That's sort of the side that we live. Yeah. And when we live inspired, I mean, you know, we used to, our first motto was leave inspired because we wanted people to leave inspired whenever we, when we started, we were doing events. And, um, and then we realized that we actually want to always mm. be inspired and live inspired. Can you speak a little bit to the types of events and experiences that Habitas offers and creates? Uh, they, they're varied in terms of, and they're varied mostly because of the location, mm -hmm. the geographic, uh, the geographic location. Um, there, th th we have a, we have certain pillars that we that we that we abide by with our with our with our events. The culinary arts, um, wellness, music, of course, human connection and adventure are, I, I would say, the most important pillars of what we do. So wherever we are, we want to, we, we, we try to create moments within those pillars. You know, even in cities where we have our clubhouses, uh, we want to create adventures and excursions in New York City, in Venice, you know, or wherever we may be. Another very important pillar that I should mention is the environment and, you know, our impact on the planet. In Mexico, there's a there's a there's a cultural divide, and in, 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 to no fault to anyone, it's just it's just it, it exists in the U.S. the same, you know, in different in parts of the U.S. Um, but to me, you know, it's it's when when you're it's so real here. With we would go on our beach, and I have picked up uh, a container from the Dominican Republic. I picked up containers from Venezuela. I picked up containers. There's this there's this natural current that occurs and, it, and the Yucatan is here, the, the current comes through the Caribbean, down the South Atlantic, into the Caribbean, back around through the Caribbean islands, hits the Yucatan. So it's a very, very, like the, the current hits the Yucatan and drops off all this waste. Um, and we live in this insanely beautiful and paradisical place 
but we are constantly reminded of, of, of the atrocities, really, of, what's, of what, what, what are happening worldwide. I mean, there are containers here that you can find, literally pick up a container at some point from Russia. I mean, it's crazy. Um, so these currents travel the entire, all, all oceans and connect. So it's, it, there is no other way. We, how do we contribute to that problem? It's impossible. And so from it being impossible to us, you know, it's sort of wearing off into in our guests. People that come here that want to use their products, that bring their products, and, and they read, you know, the sign on the room that says that where we where we encourage to not use those products and actually enjoy the natural uh, the products that we have that are locally sourced, and they're blown away. And then they, they, they we've had many times where people come and tell our, our team, our guest experience team, <coughs> excuse me, how they're going back and they're inspired to not have five containers in their shower and you know use bar soap instead of plastic uh, containers. So even just by providing that for people, we are changing, a, sort of, we're helping change this, this cultural and paradigm. Uh, and so uh, it's beautiful. It's really, really amazing. How many locations do we have now to nurture the community? And do you have a favorite? Uh, well, Tulum, I think, will always be my my personal baby, um, but uh, we have. I, I'm just thinking about it. I get so excited because it's hard to believe. But we have Tulum, full on running for about a year now. And having lived in New York and having lived in LA, um, you know, to have really a, like the grid of New York and also also like the beauty of Venice, California, it's incredible. So we have those. Um, we have a, a Malibu collaboration that's really beautiful that's coming up very soon with where we'll have a, an accommodation, uh, about 15 tents of a collaboration with a hotel. Um, we have a beautiful, beautiful, um, we're already looking at master plans with architects and visiting the islands. Uh, we have an island in the Bahamas that's, that's gonna be unbelievable. Also looking at master plans for a beautiful, beautiful project in Namibia, in Africa. Uh, all these things are actually being developed and uh, designed and conversations are already starting to happen as to how we will implement our programming and we, what, we, what we like to call our social architecture and how we design spaces based on how we foresee our community flowing through these spaces and how, you know, the importance of, of you know, of of, in, of places of engagement, of, you know, for, for very specific uh, reasons, or to just chill. Uh, but we have this very, you know, we take that very seriously, the sort of social architecture that we have. Um, so that's happening. Um, and, you know, we constantly, so far things have happened to us very organically. How many exciting things happening? And again, it's profoundly very Coming next is, uh, I, honestly, I mean, we still sort of are in this day-to-day -day of this is incredible. Um, what I just mentioned now in terms of our properties and our events, obviously that's happening. We see it in a different light, but, but uh, it's really beautiful to see this community supporting us. And I think what's next is to see how it all unfolds um, and to us it's a beautiful experiment in in connectivity um, and, in, and and inspiring and making an impact on the plant, on the world and on humans and other humans but but really it's how it unfolds that's what that's what's exciting and, and and when i am when i'm asked you know what's next it's like all these things that we've talked about but how they will unfold is what's exciting to us and what direction they will go in and letting it happen organically is beautiful.